This is the new Drake Corsair as it shows up on the 3.17.4 PTU. We're going to take a quick first look at the ship, tour the interior, check out the turrets, and load it up with the biggest vehicle it fits, a Nursa Rover. We'll also talk about its equipment and weapon systems, and I'll give my quick thoughts on how it compares to its main competitor, the Constellation series. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to note is that the ship doesn't automatically unfold its wings when you lift up the landing gear. You'll need to have the Change Configuration keybind map to do that. The ship also has a VTOL mode where it flips two of its outermost smaller engines down. All three of those things, the VTOL engines, the wing configuration, and the landing gear, are operated independently of each other, which I think is pretty cool. From the exterior, there are two ways to get into the ship. One of them is through the back ramp at the rear, just like you would get into a Cutlass Black. But fortunately, the Corsair also has a crew elevator halfway down the ship on the right side. This is the same elevator that lets you access the roof of the ship and access anything up top that might need repairs. But for now, we mostly care about the fact that it gets us inside the ship, dumping us out into the crew quarters. One thing to note about taking the elevator to the roof is that you have to be careful. Because if you step off the elevator while the ship is in motion, you will get blown clean off the ship, which is pretty hilarious, and it also let me discover what the ship's insurance claim time was. Um, it takes about 13 and a half minutes to claim, and it can be expedited to four and a half minutes for about 7,000 alpha UEC. The more you know. For our ship tour, we'll start at the front of the ship in the pilot seat and work our way back. The pilot's cockpit view is pretty decent for a Drake ship, and you've got a clear view of two MFDs and your radar while having two more mounted MFDs available out of the clear line of sight, and one functional one just lying on the ground, because... Drake. If you go to the co-pilot seat, you drop down below the pilot seat, and you get a pretty nice view out of both of the side windows. This is also the seat that lets you access the remote turret that's located on the top of the ship near the rear. This turret comes with two size 2 badger repeaters and has an incredible range of motion, and can basically attack anything at any angle above the ship. Like all turrets though, it'll automatically track around the wing so that you don't have to worry about blowing off your own hull. Just behind the cockpit, you've got one of the four crew rooms. And then as you make your way through the door further back, you get to a room with access to the side turrets, both of which also come with two size 2 badger repeaters. Each of these turrets have a conical range of motion that's not quite as good as a top turret, but it's pretty respectable, as you can see here. As you make your way further back, you've got the main crew quarters, as well as the entrance and exit elevator. In true Drake fashion, they've got the toilet-shower combo and spinning distance of the main dining hall area, so you can smell anytime your crewmates are in gastric distress while you're eating. This crew area has three out of the four crew rooms and is more or less in the center of the ship. As you make your way further back, you'll get to the main engineering room, which has some engineering control systems in the center with walkways going around either side. On the right side of the ship, there's a door that leads into the airlock room. This room has four closets and a bunch of equipment racks so that the crew can get suited up before exiting the airlock for an EVA excursion. There's also a really satisfying looking lever on the side of the airlock to close it that I just always want to pull. As we make our way further back beyond the engineering room, we get to the main cargo area, which has this cool little protected staircase to make sure any vehicles in the cargo area don't roll forward too far when parking and block the door. This is a really nice touch that SIG added, and I hope they do it for more ships. The cargo hold looks pretty spacious, and will be able to hold 72 SCU of cargo. If you give up some of your cargo, you can fit a rock, a cyclone, an STV, or an Ursa rover. Here I've loaded up an Ursa rover into the back, and you can see that it was a really easy fit for both the width and the length, but the height is a little bit tight. 
One nice thing about this cargo hold is that the ramp opens and closes really quickly. It's a small thing, but something I appreciate greatly. It's also got floodlights on the back of the ship that you can control from the back ramp, which can definitely make loading and unloading vehicles in bad visibility easier. As for the Corsair's default loadout, it comes with a full set of grade C civilian components, with two size 2 coolers, two size 2 power plants, a size 2 quantum drive, and a single size 3 shield. These are the same size and number of components as the Constellation series of ships. The Corsair also has four size 4 missile racks on the larger right wing, containing eight size 3 missiles total, but you can change those racks as you see fit. For weapon hardpoints, the Corsair has two size 4 hardpoints, with one on each of the shorter left wings, and it also has an absolutely ludicrous four size 5 hardpoints flanking the cockpit. By default, all of these hardpoints are gimbaled, but you can fit fixed weapons to them. To top it all off, the ship seems to have the same capacitor and recharge rate as the Constellation series ships. This is going to blow the Constellations out of the water for pilot control DPS. The ship is also more agile than the Constellation, beating the Connie's acceleration in all dimensions except upstrafe. The one place where I think the Connie has the Corsair beat is that the Connie is much more durable and the Corsair seems a little bit fragile, especially with its wings and its engines. I accidentally knocked off an entire wing by strafing upwards into a building at a not very high speed. It honestly broke apart a lot quicker than I anticipated, but if it ends up being too fragile, I imagine SIG will buff its HP, so I wouldn't be too worried. Since this is only on PTU at the time I'm making this video, I haven't been able to get it into any heavier combat, but based on its firepower and size 3 shield, I imagine it'll absolutely obliterate VHRTs and ERTs, and I can't wait to try it out during IAE. Thanks for watching this video, folks. I hope you've liked it. Cheers.